we're chopping the corn, harvesting it. Hey guys, it's Brie here at Blossom Branch Farm and today we're actually not at Blossom and Branch Farm. We are at our home farm here in... Minnesota! Minnesota. And we are watching the corn get harvested. We have some exciting news to share today. So excited to take you along. We're gonna do some other farm chores, fix up some stuff, and uh, we'll take you along for the ride. Let's go. Wait, we're actually gonna go in the combine. Oh, there it goes! This is our home farm. My dad was a dairy farmer here. Uh, his dad is a dairy farmer here. His dad is a dairy farmer here. And now this land actually is rented. This farm has been farmed now for 10 years by um, our current tenant farmers. And they are going to take us for a ride in the combine here in a minute. But for now, you know what we need to do? What? Fix the granary doors. Nope. Gulp. Gulp. <laughs> they haven't opened or shut in about uh, 30 years. Let's see if we can get the tracks back on. This is the part of the fun of old farm buildings is discovering the hundred years of stuff that have been put into them. All of these bays have doors up in the rafters. So here you can see there's some old sliding barn doors up here. These are all the kinds of things that I would love to save um, and pull out. This building in particular is also a little bit rough um, and that's because there's open slots. So this was the old corn crib. So after they'd harvest corn, they would put it into here. There's lots of aeration and this would dry out because there's tons of airflow happening in here. So, but with all that airflow comes lots of exposure to the elements. So these buildings in particular are pretty rotten. We've been replacing floorboards and those kinds of things. I wish some of these were salvageable, but unfortunately, with all the exposure to the elements, I don't think they are. Oh, this is messy. This cute old door. So I'm 90% sure this is some kind of body. Um, I am concerned. Right now we have an exciting treat. We've got our farmer here, Jim O'Connor, is pulling up in the combine and we're gonna go for a ride. Uh, Right, so talk us through what's happening. I kind of, I kind of told her, but yeah, so, hear it from you. So we are uh, going to harvest corn. Yeah. So. Oh, jeez. So now, did you want to drive? Uh, I. Well. No, because we've got a full, or just about full hopper. It's time to dump off onto the green car. Whoa! That's a lot of corn. Like a lot, a lot. That is a lot of corn. A lot. And then see, is that measuring the pounds there down the, below? Yes, the, uh, the indicator on the side tells us how much, how many pounds. So we load every semi to approximately 56,000 pounds which is a thousand bushels. This corn is 56 pounds per bushel. And uh, then we send them off. Now this is a little spot where it needs a little tile. The corn's just not as healthy here. We had a really wet year and uh, the corn kind of lost interest. But the good thing is it's a small spot because this field is pretty well tiled. That's just a spot where it's going to tell us it needs a little bit more. So you've been doing this long enough that you can tell just by looking at it. Definitely, yeah. So this is this is a very delicate dance. So you got to have someone who knows what he's doing running the, the tractor. The, the grain cart, the, the operator of the grain cart is uh, one of the most underappreciated uh, skill sets there is. So this is a low spot, like you're saying, this is maybe a wet. That was back there, but this this has got tile in it. Um, but the, the good good thing is, because of the tile, there's a crop. And that's just the importance of that subsurface drainage. Okay, so the tile is underground, there's a big pipe. So when there's extra water, 
all that extra water can go down and drain into that pipe so it doesn't just sit in the field. So in Colorado, we have the opposite problem, right? Yeah. It's too dry all the time. Yeah. We don't have enough water, and out here, sometimes they have too much. They've been doing a great job. We've been incorporating a lot of the no-till practices. We have been doing some cover cropping alongside them with their implementation. Um, and while it's been going really well, we really want to start pushing the envelope. So very excited and terrified <laughs> that uh, my dad has agreed to let me take over a portion of the farming for this coming year. And we'll be working still with our tenant farmers on doing harvest and planting, but we're going to be doing a lot of very different practices. We're going to be sharing a lot of these numbers and especially as we get into planning, we're going to be pulling our farmers in on a lot of these conversations that we're going to be having about these practices and how we are working together to figure out what's going to work and what we're going to plant and lots of exciting stuff coming up. So hope you guys stay tuned for this. My theory is that by reducing the inputs, that is minimizing the amount of nitrogen, converting hopefully to non-GMO seed that we are able to seed save if we want to seed save. Um, even if our yields go down, the theory is that the price per acre of production is also going to go down, resulting in a net higher profit. Good for the farmers, good for the ecology, good for the soil. So often people are like, why don't farmers just cover crop? It's better for the soil. We know this. Science has showed us this, that, you know, erosion control, biodiversity, helping with nutrient runoff, all of these things are helped by cover crops. So why don't farmers just cover crop? There are so many other considerations to make when a farmer decides to start cover cropping. Like, what is the weather going to be like? Is it going to be dry when I seed these crops? Most of them don't have irrigation, so they're relying on nature. If they seed, they pay the per acre price to put down the seed, and there's no rain, that's all a loss. And, and if there is a little bit of rain to get it started, the cover crop starts growing, and then there's a drought, sometimes that crop can take water from the main production crop. So the cover crop can be even detrimental, depending on what the crop is, what the weather's going to be, and... Farmers, just like anyone else, they don't know what it's going to be like. Is it going to be a wet summer, a dry summer? It's just too hard to predict. So it is risky to cover crop. There's also just still so much that has to do with different areas, um, different climates. What temperature do things germinate at? Are they going to winter kill? Are they going to become a weedy mess? Are they going to become a nuisance crop? Are they going to take nutrients from the plants? There is just still so much experimentation happening and it's really different for every region. So while it's easy for someone on the outside of agriculture to sit there and say, why aren't they cover cropping? Is ignoring so much of what farmers are dealing with the very slim margins that they're operating on, the incredibly huge costs that they deal with in terms of maintaining these huge machines that they have to keep going. So, so a lot of what I'm trying to do is figure out, okay, can we do this? We're taking on the risk. So I don't want our farmers to have to take on this risk on a thousand acres. Instead, we're gonna start it on a small scale. So here we are, this is the field that we're going to be farming next year. So it was all in soybeans this year, and so those have already been harvested. Um, it was not tilled after harvest. This is all just kind of residue here on the surface of the soil, but it's not really anchored down. So if we get wind, you know, this, this all will blow away and, and leave this bare. We're going to see if we can get a cover crop in here, but pretty crumbly right now, um, but nice and dark. The organic matter around here hovers anywhere between three and five percent, I think five and a half percent. I like your corn headdress, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but so we'll be farming from here where the corn starts, Ooh, there, all the way over, and then yonder down that way and across and over. So we're gonna see if if you know it is scalable and then over here on this side this is our CRP land so our conservation space 
and it backs up to our ditch here and there's all kinds of pollinator strips happening in here and so part of what I want to do oh look there's a monarch looking for some milkweed so we want to um really try to be herbicide free and for sure pesticide free here on this side because it does line up with our CRP land and you know having a pollinator strip alongside a strip of corn that's getting insecticides on it is um kind of counterproductive so I'm hoping that our YouTube audience is going to help pull us through a lot of this risk so by you guys just watching videos by you subscribing you are helping us to do this experiment because this is helping supplement the income that we are losing doing this at least for the first year and hopefully it's going to be a financial benefit and if it is what I want to do is we're fixing up a lot of these buildings uh, we're going to be reinvesting all of this into the farm both in the soil but also in our barn because our barn I'm concerned about it um, we've been seeing a lot of bowing on a couple of the exterior walls I would love to have a little bit of extra income so that we can get this barn shored up. And that means we're going to be spending a lot more time out here on our home farm. We're still going to be blossom and branch farming, of course. We'll still be doing all the flowers and all the things that we do at our farm as well, but just more adventures to come. The first thing we're doing here at the farm is to do some soil sampling to find out what's happening with the organic matter levels in the soil as well as the respiration levels. We're also comparing those numbers to some neighboring fields that have been cover cropped for the last 10 to 15 years and also have been under no-till practices. We really want to see what the differences look like between these fields that are just across the road from each other and we'll be talking about this in our next video. As many of you know, taking over this family farm is a dream come true, but it's also a big commitment and a financial risk. We're excited to announce a new way you can support our farm experiment and join us on this journey. We've launched a paid subscription option here on the channel. Becoming a subscriber is a way to help us take these risks and push the boundaries in sustainable farming. As a paid subscriber, you'll be directly supporting our work to regenerate this soil, grow more sustainably, and bring you even better content on everything from cover cropping to seed saving. You'll also get some exclusive perks like early access to videos, behind the scenes looks at our day-to-day -day struggles and triumphs, and even live Q&As monthly where we'll answer all your questions directly about the garden and farm. With your support, we can take this experiment further and make a real difference, not only for our family, but for everyone learning alongside us. So if you're as passionate about sustainable farming and gardening as we are, please consider joining as a paid subscriber today. Every little bit helps us keep going, keep teaching, and keep growing, literally and figuratively. Thanks so much, everyone. We couldn't do this without you. See you in the next video.